Hello isopod fans, this is Wally Kern with Supreme Isopods. You know what I'm crazy about? I'm crazy about my family, my wife. I'm crazy about fishing. I'm crazy about sports. Chicago Blackhawks. I'm crazy about my geckos and I'm really crazy about isopods. How crazy am I? Let's just take a look. Did you try counting all those containers? I hope not. There was over a hundred isopod containers. And I'm by far not the biggest collector of isopods. There's people selling isopods at shows, on Facebook, all over the place. So you're seeing all of this activity on isopods, all the interest. You're wondering, where do I begin? Well, that's what this video is all about. Let's talk about the five top beginner isopods. The isopod vlog. So, as you can see, the whole world is isopod crazy. But why isopods? Well, I have a video about this, and I'm going to share a link right here. Save a little bit of time on this video. I'm not showing the isopods be behind me, am I? Well, that would give away the top five, wouldn't it? I don't think I am. So, I'm going to structure this video for the beginner and for the person that's just looking to add a few isopods to their already started collection. So do you have an idea of what my top five are? If you do, put a comment down below and let me know what you think they are. The previous day to this video, I put a question out on Facebook and on YouTube asking people, and we'll talk about that at the end of this video to find out how close those people were. We got a great response from this question. So let's go ahead and talk about my top five isopods. And this list probably is going to be different than yours. It's just what I think the top five are. And I've got a certain criteria, and let me explain what that criteria is. This criteria is based on what I think a beginner should be looking for in their first isopod. The first factor is price. We don't want to be looking for an isopod that's extremely expensive. So the lower the price, the better. The second criteria is how easy these isopods are to keep. If there's any difficulty in keeping the isopods, that would knock those isopods down a little bit on my list. Of course, getting an isopod, you want to see some color or some pattern on that isopod. You want to see something different on it. So the more color, the better. And that fourth criteria for me is I want to see an isopod that's always out and about, always active in the enclosure. So you're probably already thinking some of the isopods that you guessed would be in my top five might just be slipping out of that top five already. And again, I want to emphasize this is not a top five wish list or top five, these are my favorite isopods. These are top five beginner isopods. I'm going to go ahead and show this criteria chart down below for each one of these isopods to give you a feel for how I'm judging these isopods based on my criteria. Now, you might notice that some of the isopod scores might add up to more than the isopod ahead of them in the chart. And let me emphasize, again, this is my list. There might be a couple of differences that contribute to a higher isopod being on the list, even though it has a lower score. And finally, while we're going to see some isopod setups, this video is not about how to set up an isopod setup for the beginner. I've got a link for that right here as well. Hey, did you put in your guesses of what you thought was going to be on my top five beginner isopod list? If you did, you're probably one of the people that chose one of three isopods that didn't make the list. And let me tell you why. Two of the isopods mentioned over and over again by people thinking that they would be on this list were clowns and zebras. And while I love zebras and clowns, I dropped them on my list a little bit because of price, a little bit, and because of ease of maintenance. I don't think that they're for the beginner. I think the beginner should start off with a little bit of an easier isopod to work with 
And then once they get those isopods dialed in, they can jump over to zebras and clowns. And the third isopod, not on my list, but just about on everybody else's list, was dwarf whites. And nobody can argue the benefit of dwarf whites, especially in a bioactive avarium, how low of a cost they are, how easy they are to maintain, great, great attributes. But the one attribute that really threw them down on my list is how active they are or how active they're not. Once you have dwarf whites in your enclosure, you're just not going to see them. They're going to bury themselves and they're going to stay hidden the whole time. That's also true of the giant canyons and it's also true of the Cuberus murinas as well. Once they're in an enclosure, they're gone out of sight unless you dig in the substrate a little bit. So clowns, zebras, and dwarf whites just don't make my top five list. Sorry about that, everybody. Number five. And the number five isopod on our list is Porcelio or Nottis, South or Yellow Dot. This was one of the very first isopods that I ever got, and I was so happy to get them. They did very, very well for me. They're super, super active. One of the most active isopods that I actually own. They're fairly reasonably priced, and they're certainly easy to maintain. One thing that knocks them down a little bit on this list is that they're not full of color and full of pattern. They have the yellow spots, but that's really about all that's going for them. But Porcelio or Nottis Yellow Dot, or South as some people call them, are on this list because they're super, super active. Love, love these isopods. Number four. Next up is Porcelio Onides prunonsis powder orange. There's several different morphs in this species, but the orange are absolutely my favorite. They're one of the most reasonably priced isopods out there. They're super easy to maintain, even in a little bit of an arid environment. You have to keep them moist still, but they do really, really good in drier environments. They don't have a pattern per se, but if you know me, you know that I love orange and I have to rank them high just because of their color. And they are a fairly active isopod as well. You'll find them under cork bark and other wood items, but you'll also find them out and about quite often. So powder orange ranks number four on our list. Number three. And for number three, and this might just surprise you, is Porcelio Scaber, Calico, or Orange Koi. Both are fairly reasonably priced in the market right now. Usually you can find them for a couple of dollars a piece or less. They are super, super easy to maintain. I've not had any problems whatsoever with the Porcelio Scabers. The cool thing about the Calicos is that there's many, many different colors in the groupings. You can find yellows, you can find reds, you can find greens, and you can work with those, isolate them out, and maybe develop a really super yellow or a really super red, a lava Porcelio Scaber. And the Orange Koi has a lot of variants in the group. And again, you know me, I love the orange, so you can see a pattern going right here. And both Porcelio Scaber Calico and Porcelio Scaber Orange Koi are very active in your enclosure. They're always out, and you'll really, really enjoy watching them in your enclosure. Number two. So we're down to our last two. Do you have a guess on which one's going to be number one? If you're thinking it's Porcelio Lavis Dairy Cows, you're wrong. Porcelio Lavis Dairy Cows makes mine number two on this list. And I'll tell you why. Right now in the market, they're fairly reasonably priced at maybe a couple of dollars or less. They have a really cool pattern in a base of white with black spots, dairy cows. And you're going to find a lot of variants in the group from some that don't have a lot of spots to some that do. What really makes this isopod, though, number two on our list is how easy they are to maintain. Super, super easy and especially how active they are. Dairy cows are out and about all the time. One of the easiest isopods in the hobby to breed, Porcelio Scaber Dairy Cow, makes our list at number two, and for a good reason. And before we get to that number one isopod for beginners, I wanna cover a couple of other items here. I talked about people giving their ideas of what the top five are on my list, and I wanna do a quick giveaway, but that will come at the end of this, this video. So stay tuned for the very end, and I'll announce who came closest to naming the top five of my isopod list. And now for a couple of bonus isopods that didn't quite make the top five, but I wanted to mention them anyways. We already talked about the dwarf whites. We already talked about the giant canyons. 
And both of these are excellent, excellent uh, isopods to start off with. Another great isopod is Solisticus convexus. This is the curly isopod, just a fantastic isopod to start with. Quick breeders, they're super active in the enclosure. The only thing holding them back from making my top five is that they really are a pretty plain gray-brown color, but a super, super isopod to get your feet wet with isopods. And finally, another bonus isopod, again in the Porcelio Scaber group, it's Porcelio Scaber Spanish Orange. I love these isopods. They're big, bulky, they're easy to work with, they're beautiful, orange, they're fairly reasonably priced, and again, the only reason that they're not in the top five of my list is because they take a little bit of time to develop and to start their breeding process. But a wonderful, wonderful isopod to work with. Number one. And now, number one on our list of the top five beginner isopods, native isopods. I know this group contains a lot of different isopods native to your area. Isopods like Ratke, Acellus, Nasodums, Volgare, it's a whole lot of different isopods that you can collect locally. And why are they number one in my list? It's because you should get up, go out, check out your environment, see how these isopods live. Look under fallen logs, check out their environment, get a feel for how they live and what their requirements are. Collect a few, bring them home, set them up, get a feel for how to keep isopods before you go off and buy a zebra or a clown isopod. Usually these native isopods are super easy to keep. They're obviously in your price range and they have some really unique colors and variants to their colors. So there's a lot going for these native isopods. But again, the key is get up, go out, see how they live. And that's what makes native isopods number one on my list. Hey, if you want to see other isopods in our series, I'm going to throw a link up right here to our playlist of isopods. You'll really, really enjoy some of these isopods that we're doing videos on. How did I do with my list? Did you agree? If you do, leave a comment below. If you don't agree, tell me why you don't agree and what isopod should be in that top five and which one you would bump out. For all of you taking the time to put together a list of top five beginner isopods, either on Facebook or on the YouTube community page, I wanna thank you very, very much for doing that. We had a lot of great answers and I kind of tried to rank them according to what my top five was. And again, this is all for fun. What I would like to do is select one person out of that top five and send them a couple of isopods from the top five of their choice. And I'll keep, I'll get in contact with that person right after this video. Most people said two or three isopods out of the top five in their list, but we had a couple of people that actually said native in their list as well. Those two people are Zach Miller and Barb Haley. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And Barb actually named a couple of other isopods specifically in her list as well. So for Barb, I'd like to give you a couple of the isopods from our top five list. If you already have those, we'll work something out, but I'll be in contact with you. Thank you again, everybody, for watching this video. I really appreciate your support. If you like the video, if you like this top five list, hit that like below. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss one of these isopod videos and hit that notification all to make sure you get every single one of our videos. We'll see you next week.